Everyone, it's three questions with Tisha Richmond. There you go. And I said the name right. I didn't mess it up. <laughs> so I'm really lucky here today to have Tisha. I actually just reached out to you on the weekend and said, hey, she'll be on my podcast. And here we are, like a couple of days later. So I appreciate you joining me today. And I know you're, I know you're super busy, by the way, too. You have like 18 jobs. Oh my goodness. No, this is such an honor, George. I was so excited when you reached out. You have been a huge part of my journey. So yeah, stop this it. is fun. This is super stop fun. It, stop it. So Tisha actually, <laughs> so I was saying, Tisha actually, um, she, not only does she speak and consult, she works with Canva. And we're going to talk about that in the other podcast. She still works for a school district halftime, which is wonderful. And shout out, shout out to your district for having flexibility <laughs> and actually you know, doing that stuff, because I think that's uh we're going to talk about that because I don't think there, there's a lot of people that can do kind of both opportunities, still serve a district really well, but not always, um, people don't always have that vision or opportunity to do that. So uh, kudos to your district for doing that. So I've known Tisha for a while. We were just talking and we actually connected at uh, Miami device, which is called, I think, shift is it, what's it called? Shift and EDU? Shift and EDU now. Yeah. Yeah. And our, our friend, uh, Felix Yacomino and his team uh, actually put that together as one of my favorite conferences. And uh, yeah, we've kind of connected ever since then. And yeah, I, I always love this because it's just a great opportunity just to sit down and chat with a friend too, right? So I think I'm, I'm glad you, you have the time here today. Absolutely. No, this is so fun. Thank you so much, George. Now, Tisha does a, a bunch of amazing things in education, and I know that you inspire a lot of people, but when you actually think about a teacher in your past, maybe someone who taught you, maybe a colleague you work with, who is a teacher that inspires you and why? Yes. So Leslie Bartizal is a teacher that inspired me, and it's kind of a cool story because I went to high school in a district that's very close to where I am, you know, leading now. And she was my culinary arts teacher in high school. And I had an amazing just learning experience in her class. I loved how she connected. She built relationships with her students, but had no idea when I graduated from high school that I would actually end up being a culinary arts teacher. And so when I, I started out my career in San Diego, taught for five years there, and then moved to, back to the area where I was raised and got a teaching job in the neighboring district. And that teacher that I had in high school, Leslie Bartizal, actually had moved districts and was at this school that I got hired at. So we actually got to be teachers together in the same department. She was teaching uh, the beginning culinary arts classes. I was um, teaching some of the advanced. And so we just had this wonderful time getting to co-teach together. And she taught me so much. I mean, I was just a young teacher, just trying to figure everything out at that time. And I just learned so much from her. So just thinking back to what I learned about being a teacher by being an actual student in her classroom, but then actually getting to experience it from the teacher perspective was just amazing. And I'm still connected with her today. So super, super grateful well, for her. Well, yeah, give a little shout out to Leslie. <laughs> So love that the, the you know okay so I gotta ask you this what was the transition where you started addressing her by your first name like when did that happen did you like call her like were you comfortable right away but calling her by her first name that's something I have a really hard time with you know even yeah. teachers that I had as a kid to this day yeah you know what I think that I did make the shift okay maybe because <laughs> there was enough distance right, right. like this right. was about ten years or more later that I actually um, was teaching with her. So I think I did okay, but it was it was surreal. It definitely yeah. was surreal to now be, you know, partnering with her where I have all these memories of being in her class. Well, I, cool. I'm sure she was so proud, right? To see someone inspired, you know, by her class to actually eventually go and teach it, right? So very, very cool. So you you have uh, we were talking before you have a great administration really empowering you and giving you you know a lot of flexibility and opportunities um, and so when you think of administrators that inspired you in your career who's someone you think mm -hmm. of and why yeah so I so many really come to mind but I have to shout out Michelle Cummings because she was the one who recognized something in me and really encouraged me to take this path to 
working at the district level to being a tech integration specialist uh, to really what I'm doing now. And it's funny because I was looking back at, I, I went back onto Twitter last night and I was trying to remember like when it was that we really, that, that administrator and I really connected and it was over your book because oh, really? we, I had been doing um, Twitter chats. And so I had hosted a book study on innovators mindset. And I, I had to go back and I had to remember like exactly like the hashtags I was using and everything. But she saw that I was hosting this book chat for our district and connected. And I don't know if you remember, but shortly after that, she held an innovator summit in our district and she bought your book for everybody oh. in attendance. So that was really, really cool. But I am so, so grateful to her because she really empowered me to mm -hmm. lead and to realize that I do have, I did have those skills. I did have something in me that I didn't realize I had in myself. And she also is somebody that I, she's no longer living, working in our district, but I still keep in contact with her and um, have really seen her as a mentor over the years. So well, really, really grateful. That is going to get an extra, an extra <laughs> shout out. So that, that is very cool. Yeah, it, it is kind of cool. There's a lot of people um, through the years that I've connected with because of the book and not because of people reaching out to me reading it. I think that's part of it, mm -hmm. but obviously because the book encourages people to go create and actually yeah. connect and share. And it, it's kind of neat seeing, uh, I don't know if you were part of iMOOC when we did that. Yeah. There's a, there's a, you know, a lot of people started their blogs then still blogging today, still Absolutely. creating stuff. And you, and it's really the, the whole premise of the work. I think that both of us do now is really how do we get other people to, you know, find their passions, create and connect and inspire others. And it just kind of, you know, goes viral over time. So that, that is a, you know, pretty affirming uh, story on my part. And I feel, I feel a little embarrassed that you did. So I think I felt you like you did a little research before you came on the podcast. <laughs> questions were coming. So right. I was just, right. I was really curious. I'm like, what was, cause I kind of had an idea, but when I went back onto my Twitter feed, like <laughs> went really archived, I, I was able to pull this up. So it's really cool. All right. Well, I try to make my podcast as like research little as possible. Right. <laughs> I, like, I just like having conversations, but I appreciate the extra, you know, the extra <laughs> effort. So, uh, and, and thanks for, for sharing that. Okay. So you have like a really interesting career because a lot of times you think about you know, you go into culinary arts and then you end up, you know, doing, you know, leading it in technology integration. It's not, it doesn't yeah. seem like it's a, it, it's a, 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 like a, a normal, I, I don't right. know if that's the right word, but like a, a regular transition that actually happens. But the, the reality of it is that there's, there's so, when people say to me, I'm not good with technology, a lot of times I'm like, like, you're not good at learning. Cause that's really what it is. It's like, I'm not good yeah. at pushing buttons to see what happens. And I think that like in both of those disciplines, there's obviously a lot of like, you know, testing different things out, trying different things. So there is a lot of connection, I think, if people are looking for it. So if you go back to your, you know, first year of teaching, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to yourself? Yeah. So my first year teaching, first of all, I was very, very young. I looked young. I was young. I think I was 22 years old. I was working at a high school in Southern California. And I remember just being approached by people, staff at the school, asking me for my hall pass because I looked that young yeah. that I didn't look like I should be a teacher. So I was pretty intimidated. I was pretty overwhelmed by this, this whole thing that I had gotten myself into at the time. And I remember that my mentor teacher, she was in my room a lot when I was teaching that first year. And I remember being so nervous and thinking, what does she think of me? What is, you know, is, what is, what is her thoughts on how I'm teaching? And so I, I was really stern and I was like, had the teacher face. And I just remember her one time coming up to me in class and just kind of whispering, it's okay to have fun. You can smile, you can laugh. Right. And that stuck with me because I'm like, wow, like I didn't even realize that I wasn't having fun, right? Like I, it wasn't something that I was really conscious of, but when she said that to me, I'm like, wow, like I need to relax a little bit. 
I need to have more fun with this. And I think that that's been a pretty common theme and actually something that I'm really passionate about now is really how can we bring joy into learning? How can we have fun teaching? Because that is contagious. When we have fun teaching, when we can bring joy into that experience, then our students catch that and they mm -hmm. become joyful learners. And so uh, that, yeah, that is, that is something I for sure would tell my first year teacher self, have more fun. Well, it's it's one of the benefits of, you know, being in education. I, I always joke about this was it's like partially true is like I was inspired by the movie Billy Madison. Right. And mm -hmm. it was like, oh, like, here's this guy who goes in and hangs around kids all day. Like how energetic, how, like how energizing that is. And actually, you know, it ties in. I know uh, your title, of your book, and I encourage people to check out Tish's book, Make Learning Magical. Uh, it, it's obviously that's a theme of doing this because yeah. it is a blessing to work with, you know, kids and have that inspiration every single day. And so, um, it was wonderful having you on the podcast. I look forward to talking more about, um, your work and all the things that you do to inspire so many people. So I, everyone listening, uh, check out Tisha's book, make learning magical down below, uh, in the description, you can follow Tisha and Tisha. Thanks so much for being on here. It was, it's wonderful to just sit down and chat. It's been so fun. Thank you, George. Thanks everyone for being here today.